but we let them set set the terms of the debate by, you know, every time we talk about abortion, we have to talk about rape and incest, life of the mother. Let's talk about the 1%, less than 1% hard cases. That's all they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about the 99% of cases where abortion is used as quite control. explicitly as a form of birth control. Welcome back to my channel, guys. I'm checking out one of the best. There are this is Charlie Cake and Mouthwatch. The title of this is What Do We Do Now? Guys, let's get straight into this. Matt, would love your clarity on kind of a debate that is raging on the right right now regarding abortion. How should we think about it? What should we do? Uh, Matt Walsh, what is your perspective on this? Well, I think, I mean, first of all, as I think most people know, I'm absolutely, radically, 100% pro-life, uh, no exceptions. I think, I think and for, for the simple reason that it's the only logical and morally coherent position to take is to be against all abortions uh, because we kind of have we have we have two questions really when you think about the abortion issue um, the first is you know is it always wrong to kill innocent defenseless human beings that's the first question my answer to that question is yes and the second question is is an unborn human in the womb a human does that count as a human my answer to that is also yes, because uh, if you don't say yes, then, then you're left with a third question. Is, well, okay, well, if it's not a human, then what, then what is that creature in the womb? It's, is it some other species? Is, it, uh, is there a stage of human development where a human being is not even a human? That doesn't really make any sense. And so I think, again, just kind of logically, you're left with the inescapable conclusion that abortion is always wrong because it's always the murder of a human being. And that's my position. So th that, that's, that's the... That's the position. Now, there's a second part of the question, which is the politics of it. And I understand that my, my position of being totally opposed to abortion in all cases is not the majority view of the American people. And it's probably not even a sizable minority at this point, because unfortunately, we live in a country where most people are OK with at least some amount of baby murder. Which is a major, which is a major indictment on our culture and a major that's problem right. in its own right. But it is the, yeah. it is the political reality, and so that's that. And, and it's sort of the, I have the advantage when I'm not a politician that I don't really have to navigate the political reality, that of course the politicians do. Yeah. So Matt, can you comment on the conservative movement and some Republicans that have been telling us they're pro-life and they're being revealed they're actually not very pro-life, especially in this last week last couple of days where people say, well, no, I'm not, I'm not that pro-life. What's your comment on this? Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's, it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me because this is to some extent, this is what we've seen for decades now in the Republican party. In fact, what we're being told right now is that the way to win elections is to, um, is to, is to moderate your position on abortion is to be, is to be at least a little bit pro-abortion. And the thing is that that, that's what, those of us who've been in the pro-life movement for a long time, we know that we've been hearing that. This is not a new thing. It's not a new insight. This is what the Republican Party has been saying my entire life. They've been insisting that the only way to win elections is to uh, is to basically, you know, forfeit the pro-life position to some extent. It doesn't seem to have worked out so far. Um, and the other problem, too, is that you know, what we're being told is, that, OK, well, we have to treat it as a states' rights issue. Now, I don't agree with that. I think that, again, killing babies is always wrong, no matter, no matter what. And it shouldn't, you know, no state should have the, the right to kill babies. Um, but if that is the position that a conservative takes, well, then it doesn't make any sense to then turn around and oppose the states that are outlawing it. Because you just, if you're, if you're kind of way to navigate this is to say, well, make it states' rights. Well, then what happens when a state does outlaw it? If you turn around and oppose that too, well, then it appears that you're just pro-abortion. And... That's some of what we're seeing in Arizona right now, where you know, after the Supreme Court decision, a, a law is going to go into effect. It's not a federal law. It's a law in that particular state that's going to ban most abortions. And yet we have, we have people on the right who appear to be opposed to that, too, um, which, doesn't, which doesn't make any sense to me if, if, you're, if you're claiming that this is states' rights. Well, that, that's, the state has the right to pass that law, don't they? And it, it's been eye-opening to me because what should have been met with celebration, Matt, was met with retreat. <laughs> And exactly. That's that, yeah. Go ahead, please. Yeah, that's uh, that is the most frustrating thing for me. Uh, you know, the the, the uh, overturning of Roe v. Wade is a, a, one of the one of the great victories for for human rights that has ever been achieved in the history of human civilization. It's not an exaggeration. 
was the overturning of that of that um, evil, ridiculous law uh, or decision. And rather than doing what the left does, which is when they get a victory, they they gloat about it, they celebrate, and then they immediately look for like, what can we do next? How can we double down? Where, where do we take this next? What's the next victory? They're never satisfied. And instead, what we've done on the right, in many corners anyway, is we've responded by we're embarrassed of the victory. We don't want to talk about it. We're, we're, you know, we seem to be disappointed that it happened because it's politically inconvenient. And we're now retreating, um, you know, kind of snatching, snatching uh, uh, defeat from the jaws of victory, which I think is one of the essential differences between the right and left. Why do you think that is? Why, why, do, why does the left play to win and our side plays to comfortably lose? I think some of it is just conditioning. This is, this is the way conservatives have always been. Um, and on this particular issue of abortion, I think that, you know, the right, generally speaking, has never tried the strategy of actually trying to effectively message on this issue. So we've, so again, my entire life, I've, what I've been told is that the only way for Republicans to win is to moderate and run away and compromise on this. Well, there's another, you know, the idea of like, let's go on offense. Let's take it to the other side. Yes. They are the ones... They are the ones who actually do support the, the murder of fully developed uh, infants in the womb who could live outside of the womb. I don't think that that matters in terms of whether it's okay to kill them. It's, it's not okay in either case. But they, that is the mainstream Democrat position right now. And um, rather, like, that should be the conversation. That should be what we're talking about. But we let them set, set the terms of the debate by you know, every time we talk about abortion, we have to talk about rape and incest, life of the mother. Let's talk about the 1%, less than 1% hard cases. That's all they want to talk about. They don't want to talk about the 99% of cases where abortion is used as quite control. explicitly as a form of birth control. Um, and, uh, but we allow them. We allow them to escape uh, by, by setting the terms of the debate in that way. Guys, I, I'll be honest. I believe that abortion is the wrong thing. And there's no way... I'm pro-life, and there's no way you can seriously make it sound right. But when you think about this, I know a lot of us that are pro-life still understand where people come from when they want to do abortion. Like, when you see students messing around or people who are not ready for life yet having sex and something leads to something, she gets pregnant. You know... They don't want the child to suffer. Like, that's the thing. More like, they feel if my parents could have just aborted me and I really don't have to come to this life and suffer. And now they're thinking, I really don't want this child to suffer. I really can't bring a child into this world. But I honestly say, I, I told my friend, I believe that abortion is plan G because you have, you have plan A, don't have sex. You have plan B, use protection. You have plan C, use pet control. And you, you didn't do those theory. And yes, plan D, you have to remove it. And it's heartbreaking because there's no, even if it's a two way child, a one month child, you won't lie that. Child care said that the child brain frequency starts at six months. I think six or five. Yeah, I think six months. And even if it's before then, even if it's two weeks, like, I believe that you knowing that this has the chance of growing and becoming a child, but it's heartbreaking. I, I honestly believe that it comes to parents. I don't think it's an easy thing for you to just abort the child. Like, it breaks you down. And people who do it, I honestly believe that they have conscience and they go through a lot. And they don't want the child to come in and suffer or come to the world and you end up hating the child and stuff like that. But guys, we talk about this. I, I don't think there's any good reason to want to jump. <laughs> but I can't wait to the comment section, guys. I'll see you next time, guys. Best.